welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about taking reading notes on fiction. I think a lot of us are aware of how to take reading notes on nonfiction because nonfiction books tend to have those really convenient itemized sections to them. So you can just put their headings as your headings and you're off to the races. But where a lot of people get confused is how do you take reading notes on a fiction book. The example I'm going to be using throughout this video is uh, the classic 1984. If you haven't read 1984, you definitely should. So I'll just start off with admitting that taking reading notes is not my favorite thing. I don't really like taking the extra time for reading notes, and I try to avoid it at all costs. But I found that they can be really helpful, so I want to give you some ways to take reading notes that won't actually take a lot of your time. They're really quick and they'll be great references when it comes time for exams or reading quizzes. I know that I give pop reading quizzes over the uh, reading from the night before sometimes, but I'll let kids review their reading notes if they did take reading notes before taking those quizzes so that they can have all the information fresh in their minds before they go into that quiz. So if you find yourself in the same kind of situation, here are some things that it would be great to write down. The first thing you should take notes on is uh, just the characters. Who are the characters? I like to refer to this as a character list, which is literally just a list of each character that you meet who seems to have any significance at all to the plot. So the first character that you meet in 1984 is Winston Smith, the protagonist, and very soon thereafter, the character of Big Brother, or the persona of Big Brother. So you would write down both of those names, and any really significant defining characteristic about those characters. So next to Big Brother, you could even just write in charge <laughs> or something, and, and that would give you enough to remember, oh right, <clears throat> Big Brother. Hopefully you wouldn't forget in a book like 1984 who Big Brother is, but it's what these reading notes are for, remembering. So keep a character list, that's the first thing. The second thing you should write down is what happens. You might be looking at your screen like this about now. Uh-huh, write down what happens. <laughs> How do I do that in a way that doesn't take up all my time? Well, I would suggest that you bullet point those elements of the plot that are major. If a long time is spent on a particular event, make sure that you know about that event. You don't need to write down every detail about it, but you should have some bullet points about what happens, some of the major decisions that your characters make. Uh, if they go physically from place to place, if they move uh, from one town to another, for instance, you would need to write that down. So just bullet points, doesn't need to be full sentences, bullet points will do. So keep a character list, bullet point the basic skeleton of the plot, what happens. Then look at any images that come up again and again and again, like those posters of Big Brother in 1984. If there is an image that comes up a lot, maybe just jot that down. In A Tale of Two Cities, I'm teaching that right now so it's fresh in my mind. There are a ton of mobs. Mobs are everywhere. Obviously those are going to play into the plot as well, but if you see a recurring image like that, or the um, paperweight in 1984, the paperweight that comes up several times throughout the plot, I would just jot down that item, that image. Again, you don't need to elaborate, just make a note of what that is so you can refer to it later, and remember that probably is something important character list, basic plot, what seem to be those images that are recurring or those objects that um, the writer spends a lot of time talking about. In Heart of Darkness, the rivets come to mind. If you've read Heart of Darkness, you know that there's that whole section about getting rivets, and the word rivet is probably repeated, I don't know, 60 times or something ridiculous like that. If that's the case, if there's a recurring image or an object that gets a lot of focus, jot down what that is. Chances are it has to do with a theme or it's a symbol or both. So that'll set you up for some success. Last thing you should double check after you've done your reading 
is the beginning and the end. The beginning and the end of the chapter, or more importantly, the beginning and the end of the book or the epic poem or whatever you're taking notes on. The very beginning and the very end will include a ton of really important information. You should know the beginning and the end. If you didn't make any notes about those things, uh, go back, make a note about the very beginning and the very end. Often those will set up and wrap up what is most important in that chapter or in that book. As a test for yourself to see, did I really get everything that I needed to get out of this reading? See if you could paraphrase what happens using specific character names and just cause and effect because this happens, then this happens, then this happens. Uh, if you can describe the plot in those terms, then you understood what went on and you should be set for the next day or quiz or what have you until the teacher or professor is able to unpack those things a bit more. So those are the basics. I know this probably doesn't answer every question you have about taking reading notes, but at least it gives you some basis for how to begin taking notes on fiction, which is at times a lot more daunting than taking notes on nonfiction. So if you found this video helpful, uh, make sure to subscribe and like. Be sure to post in the comments any additional questions that you might have, and I hope to see you soon.